Hello beautiful people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video series from. It's me again, Peter. In our last video, we talked about two type of uh, type 2 hypervisor that we're going to be using in our video series. So the first one is going to be the VMware Workstation Pro. And also we have the Hyper-V that comes with your Windows machine. For the VMware Workstation, it's actually a paid product. So meaning that you go to VMware or do like a Bing search or Google search, you can type in VMware Pro, then you download it. So once you download it, it's kind of like next, next finish type of a thing. So once you have that, you'll be able to come up with this. So if you look at it, I have a Workstation Pro 17. So with these, I can create a machine that will reside on my local computer. The same thing with this, since Hyper-V already come with your local machine, all you have to do is search for it. And if that is going to be your first time, it's going to ask you to enable Hyper-V, have you to restart your machine. And after that, you'll be able to launch this. In your case, it's going to be empty. The reason why mine is not empty is because I've actually used it to virtualize some machines and uh, just to see how it looks like. If you're going to be using the IPV, one thing I want you to have in mind is that try to make sure all of your virtual machine it's in a different location, not in your document. For example, let me show you what I mean. Once you launch it, you want to come to the Hyper-V settings and you want to make sure that you fill up these two things. If you look at my, I've actually created a folder in my C drive whereby it's going to be Hyper-V and all my disk is going to be located here. So the same thing I have for my virtual machine that all the virtual machine is going to be here. Why did I do it that way is because just in case I really wanted to get rid of all these machines that you see here, all I have to do is right click, delete them and go to where the disk actually located and get rid of them. So it's much better for me. The same way I've actually done here on the VMware workstation, create a lab and also call it VMware. So it makes life easier. If you're wondering that you wanted to know much about Hyper-V, there's a lot of information on the web, the same way with the Workstation Pro. From now on, we're not going to be using the Workstation Pro because I can use it, but for the kind of lab that I really wanted to create, I need more RAM, I need more space, which my local machine does not have. So I'm going to be going with the Hyper-V Y because I can easily create a new server machine in Microsoft Azure. Then that will give me exactly the same Hyper-V uh, configuration that I need, which I'm going to show you in the future. So with that being said, let me quickly walk you through how you can create a machine and you see what I mean right here. In the last video, I mentioned that you need your operating system that you wanted to be using. You need to make sure that you have the SSD drive, enough memory to work with these guys. So let's first start with uh, the Hyper-V. This is a very simple way I'm going to use to create my machine. So right click, oh, not right click, just click on new virtual machine and I'll show you what is going on. If I click on next, I can say this is going to be my Windows Server 2019. I'm storing this virtual machine in this place. Remember that I mentioned that I've created uh, a folder in my C drive that is called lab and I'm, this is just like a subfolder under this folder. If you see having difficulties with that, you can actually write back to me. So I go to next, I choose generation two, next. 
I provide the memory that I really want. So on my local server, I do have like 64 gig of memory. So this one is okay for me. I can deal with it. Choose my default switch. Next. Then you can actually throw this down, depends on the space that you want, you have on your server. And you can actually bring it down to 60. Just make sure that the location that you have right here, it's the same location you specify. So look at the same location. And this is window 19. Uh, this is the name. And this is going to be the add disk. Next. Those are actually done automatically for you. So let's move to the next one. Right here, you choose your operating system. For me, I'm going to choose browse to my uh, server. Now, this is where the this is where I actually store my own. Let me show you. I go ahead uh, into my lab. So this is my ISO. Then I can choose my Windows Server 2019 right there. And that's all. That's how you start creating. So if you actually connect, I mean, if I should connect right here, I can click on start and you see what happened. So I press the key. Now I will begin to install my Windows Server 2019. The same way you can do it here. It's not that hard, but it just have a different way of viewing it. You click on next, you select your operating system. Windows Server 20, well, I just choose 2022. Then it's gonna ask you to provide some information right here. In my case, if you have the key, you can actually put it here. You can, we can see that the way the VMware actually handled the installation of your server. It's different than the Hyper-V. In, inside the Hyper-V, we have not been asked to provide a key. So if you have it, it's good. If you don't have it, then you can just go ahead and click on next. So, but I wanted to show you something. Once you do that, it asks you to name the machine. Look at this location. That is where we want that machine to reside. I click on next. I don't want to change it. It gave you like 60. I mean, it's just giving you like the minimum. If you need more or if you have more space, you can actually bump this up to 100. Let me do that for you. I mean, I can change this to 100, but what will I do there? Let me just have it to 60 because anyway, I'm still going to delete it. So once you click on finished, what happened here is this. Let me show you. That's why I told you that I, I really love uh, VMware Pro. In the Hyper-V, you have to keep doing this manually. Let's say, you see, I don't have the key. I have to select this and there we go. So if you're able to get your hand on this guy, which is the VMware Pro, that's cool because it will do everything for you. Right here on my Hyper-V, I have to be doing it one by one and uh, it's the same process, but I think that one is actually more faster than the other. Look at that. The same process, the way I get on the Hyper-V and also the way I'm doing this on the VMware Workstation. You're asking me, is there any different? Yes. Based on the way you are using it. Because right here, once we have this done, what is going to happen is that we can actually manage those server right here under the IP, I'm sorry, under the VMware Workstation Pro. But in case of the IPV, you have to keep clicking on the individual server so before you can use it. There's another way around that, but you would need an extra software to do it. So with that being said, uh, that is how you are going to create your virtual machine. And once you have it, everything is done. It's ready. 
as you can see, I'm doing this on my local machine. So if I really wanted to test a server, I can easily bump up uh, a virtual server. I can walk with it. And if I don't need it anymore, I can actually delete it. So one thing I notice while I'm doing this is that my local machine is actually making some noise. <laughs> Why? Because I'm actually doing some virtualization on it and it consumes a lot of resources, just like we explained in the first video. So I'm going to let this one down. You can see that Hyper-V is much more faster than the VMware one in terms of the installation. So what I want you to see what they look like once it's finished. If you do have any question, we are doing this from scratch. You know, this is the kind of, uh, how do I call it? This is the kind of journey you are going to face if you are doing this by yourself. But the idea is just for you to understand uh, which type of hypervisor you really wanted to use to visualize your environment. So after this video, I'm going to be using a different server, which is going to be from the Microsoft Azure. If you do have the opportunity to have that also, it's amazing. Why? Because it gives you the opportunity to scale out your, your server. For example, if I need an additional disk right now on my local system, it's not very easy for me to do because I would need to either have to not destroy, but go inside the, uh, the local machine unscrew them and try to fit in another hard drive or use an external hard drive. But in the case of the cloud, you can actually provision an additional hard drive on the go while you're actually <laughs> working on your server. I will show you if you stay along with me for these um, in this uh, series and I can actually show you what it looks like in the Microsoft Azure. So right now we have this server done. So let me show you what is going to happen. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> now nah, get connect. All right, our Windows Server is actually up and running right now here. The same thing here. So in this case, I have a functional <laughs> functional server actually installed on my local machine without having to to have another computer beside me. So. Now we just virtualize the the machine right now and everything is working fine. So with that being said, this is how you can actually virtualize uh, your machine in the future video. Look at that, beautiful. You see that? So you tell me which one you like the best. Look at that. I can easily resize this and it should resize itself once it's finished. For me, this is actually all what we need because VMware is going to do its own thing. So let me wait a little bit to see what it's going to do. In honest review, I love the, I love both of them. It all depends on what you are using it for. Most of the time I just find when I'm actually doing, um, for example, let's say I'm trying to reproduce something in Microsoft Intune, like the autopilot, I prefer to use a uh, Hyper-V in that way. But I find my way around using the VMware Workstation Pro. So, which is cool because you learn as you go. But in that case, I really prefer this one. Now we have a machine ready to go and to be used for anything that we wanted to use it for. 
if we do want to make this machine to become a Windows server, all we have to do is install the role. So with that being said, if you do have any question regarding these two guys, <laughs> two products, you can put it down below and we can take a look into it together. And I'll be very glad to answer any of your question. With that being said, I will go ahead not building my lab on my local machine, but I'm going to use a cloud machine. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how I create that kind of machine and also how I deploy a nested visualization on it to be ready for use. Thank you so much for following this video series. I really appreciate you and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye for now.